is crowdfunding of comics viable? Uh, I've done videos on crowdfunding, kind of how you can do it right and marketing and supporting, but over time, is crowdfunding of comics a, a business path forward that will survive? Let me kind of lay out the different pieces for you. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I'm gonna talk a little bit about crowdfunding. Hey, like always, uh, I always forget to do this at the beginning, but apparently if you're trying to run a successful channel, you will. Uh, please, hey, if you, if you like the content here, uh, subscribe to the channel, it helps. Uh, for, for some reason it helps. And uh, like the video, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's great to see your engagement. I wanna thank everybody who's uh, subscribed and liked so far. It's, it's, I, I'm, uh, I'm very humbled by the support that I've gotten. Uh, for this channel and for all my crazy rambling. So thank you very much. There you go. I, I need to get in the habit of doing that, but it feels so awkward coming out of my mouth. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, crowdfunding, is it viable? Well, so it is, it is certainly. I mean, obviously people are making money from it now. So, you, you know, people are making money. You can't say it's not viable because uh, it's generating cash and, and some people who you know, didn't have a mechanism to get a comic out are now getting it funded and, and they're getting comics out. Um, and, and regardless of the quality, so you may, co you may have an opinion, I've, I've heard this too, like, yeah, but many of these crowdfunded comics are terrible, they're coming in at, at very low quality and everything else, so, you know, it's, it's garbage. Um, that, that, sure, I mean, maybe, it, that's, that's your opinion, I think it may be, they may be good, they may be bad, at the end of the day, you know, any comic can be good or bad, it, it's, you know, who knows, it, it, the decision of whether it's worth you know, four ninety nine for this War of the Realms tie-in, or it's worth twenty five dollars for this, uh, you know, uh, military comic. I, it's up to you. I mean, that's it's your money. You you choose. Um, but it is viable. It's making money now. On the other hand, I don't think that crowdfunding. And let me choose my words really carefully here because people can misinterpret. I don't think crowdfunding, as it currently is, meaning the the mechanism that it currently uses. I don't think it's long-term viable. And now what I mean by that is I, I do think that Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and, and those kinds of services, and undoubtedly there will be others that will crop up. Uh, I don't think they will get regulated. They're going to, the, the business models and the way these, these things operate will change. Now, how can I say that with certainty? Well, I mean, PayPal has changed. Uh, MySpace is gone. There's a lot of, of internet-based uh, systems that no longer exist. So one way or another, these systems are going to shift and adapt, and they should, as people find different ways to buy things, as, as the, you know, some of the complaints about fulfillment comes out, the companies are going to try and make that better. There's going to be evolution of these platforms, and some of that evolution will benefit uh, crowdfunded comics, and other parts of the evolution will not. And what I mean by that is there's, you know, in every system, in every tool and every uh, thing that gets created, uh, people find aspects of it that work for them and aspects that do not. And where comics are concerned, uh, there is a I don't, loophole is the wrong word, but there is a, a mechanism there where comics don't have to be completely done. You can start the campaign, you can start to generate some money and some interest, and then campaigns can be late by you know, in some cases, I mean, what, Joe Majura, years. I mean, some of these, some of these campaigns, you know, Rob Liefeld, I think, has one hanging out there for, for what, like eight, eight years, more? So it, it's, you know, the, the lateness, um, while I think Indiegogo, Kickstarter have done a decent job of being able to separate themselves from the artist, of saying, well, you know, that's, that's their business, what they're doing, not, not ours. Um, they, uh, they, they, it also gives them somewhat of a black eye in the, you know, they, they don't want their service to be seen as, you know, the place where projects kind of stumble around and, and eventually make it to market. Maybe they, they want their business to be more like Amazon. They want people to come out, offer products, get funded, get money into it and fulfill. They, you know, they don't like the lateness. And so, and, you know, and that, that's something that they're going to work to address. And for people who make comics, I think it's been 
it's been easy to throw out a campaign, see if it gets interest. If it does get interest, great. If not, you know, they can kind of set their own schedule. And I think that that's, that's going to be something that changes. The other thing that's going to happen is I do think that there was a, a boom, if you will, um, a gold rush type boom of people who are willing to come in and pay $25 for a comic, maybe because ideologically they, they wanted to basically show that they are, they're you know better than, you know, they're not better than they, they, they're showing that they're sick of Marvel or DC's practices. And so they're willing to kind of pay, you know, five X a normal comic in order to have something that kind of ideologically says, Hey, look, I'm supporting, I'm not supporting you. I'm supporting something else. I think that there's that too. And, and $25 is a lot of money, uh, but it's not like this comic is, uh, you know, it's not like a monthly comic. So I think people are able to justify it a little bit, but as, as enough uh, things have been fulfilled, people are like, well, yeah, but the quality isn't always the same from a production standpoint as a regular comic, whether it's the, the coloring or the type, it doesn't feel like, you know, a, a comic that I'd pick up off the shelves from, from Marvel or DC. And a lot of the extras that were included to raise the price to $25 are not really that, I mean, okay, I got a poster, I got a, a this or that. Is it not as compelling as, you know, maybe it seemed when you backed the comics. So I think you're going to get, not, not buyer's remorse, that's way too strong a word, but you're going to get buyers who are, you know, pushing the price down, basically going, hey, okay, it was fun to put our money here, but now as more and more campaigns come up, I'm going to want to see comics drop to a, to a more reasonable price. And I don't really care about all these extras. I just like a good core comic. So I think that's going to change as well. The other thing though, um, about the whole crowdfunded model is for whatever reason, and I don't know why, but it, it's, it's linked heavily to videos and chats. And you notice a lot of the people who are making comics also have a channel and they're doing videos, and most of the videos that get done are kind of anti-videos about the competition, as opposed to you know pro videos about the work that's coming out. And that's that's interesting too. So it's not, you know, as that model has developed, you've got a lot of people who are making at least some revenue. I'm going to take out the big guys. You take out the uh, the Richard Myers and the Ethan Van Skyvers who are making lots and lots of money off off uh, videos. Take those guys out of the equation. Uh, we're, we're you know go for the mass, not the the outliers. Um, you know they're not making much money on videos, but it is a supplemental income and it's tied to the book they're trying to promote or put out. So you, you get this situation where you've got a, a business, a crowdfunded business that's linked to some other elements like videos and super chats and, and all the rest. And that too, I think the whole, you know, gold rush of YouTube videos and advertising and super chats and all that kind of stuff, that also feels like it's, I don't want to say going away, but just at some point, uh, that's not going to continue either because YouTube says, all right, enough's enough. We are tired of, you know, being labeled as the company that enables all this, you know, kind of ranting and, and that or it's going to be kind of YouTube bowing under pressure of, of actual wealthy content creators who are going to say, you know, we don't want the channel clogged up with this noise from these little guys. So you're going to have to put them in their own little corner or start to weed them out. I think that's already started to happen. Um, or for our, and the other, uh, on the other end, people just get tired of politics. They get, you know, we, we burn out of talking about Trump and uh, social justice and, you know, people start rolling their eyes when they hear SJW rather than getting kind of that heated emotional response to it. Um, Lord knows I'm already there, but I, <laughs> I think that more and more people are going to kind of say, all right, I've, I've been angry long enough on this topic. I'm interested to be angry about something else. Can we can we go back to GMOs or uh, anti-vax or something like that? I'm mean, just and something else, please. So I think that there's I think that those two factors will change crowdfunding. Um, what is interesting about crowdfunding is the idea that somebody can get closer to their consumer, that somebody who's creating a comic can make a system where they can have more direct feedback, more direct interaction, more direct analytics about their consumers and their customers. That's interesting. And I think as a, as a concept is as we look at ways that distribution is going to change and maybe we evolve diamond and, and other things in the big two, I think you're going to see a lot of lessons 
from crowdfunding around how to get closer to your consumer that will make its way into all comics. So I think that's something that will be shared. But crowdfunding in general, uh, like any anything, uh, I've, I've heard some videos, heard people like, hey, this is the new way. All comics are going to be sold this way. Well, obviously not. And there will be there will be something else. There will be another way. I still believe very, very strongly that you're going to get to Amazon's kind of, uh, you know, digital published drop ship on demand uh, system. I think that is coming for content creators. I, I absolutely think that's coming and relatively soon. And then I think you'll see a, a kind of movement to that. You'll see a movement to people who are putting their comics up and uh, being able to use this vehicle. And the ones who go first, the ones that have a comic ready, who can go out the door, I think you're going to see Amazon give a little bit of extra promotion toward. So you're going to see a bunch of content creators, comics, uh, who are, uh, you're going to see some new names bubble out of this thing. Because the ones who kind of jump in and adopt in the first six months are going to get a little bit of a boost that the others won't. And so you'll, you'll see some new, you know, for lack of a better word, some new celebrities come out of this. Um, like you see with, with every system. I mean, part of the reason why Richard Meyer was able to do what he did is because he was early to this type of, of comic book video. And he also was early to, to doing crowdfunding as, as kind of, you know, there were others obviously who went before, but he was one of the first ones to do it in this new model of, you know, tying the movement of I'm sick of the big two. I'm sick of the politics. So I'm going to, you know, it's kind of almost an image, too, of like, I want something different. I want this new uh, product, this new model. And he took advantage of that. And he was early, and, and it's one of the reasons why he made the money he did. If, if Richard Meyer had been starting his YouTube channel, you know, today, and his comic book launching today, it wouldn't get anywhere close to the same attention. Uh, because things, you know, the, the, he, was, he read the timing of his situation well. And so I think you're going to see some other things pop up like that. Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of a short bit on crowdfunding. I mean, it's 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 not long term viable in its current state. It will evolve and change into something else. And I think anyone who's going, hey, you know, if you're jumping into crowdfunding today to get your comic done, you're going to see lesser returns than what people saw a year ago. That's that's inevitable. If your plan is to kind of jump into crowdfunding, um, you know, buddy up to some of the big YouTubers out there and get some promotion from your book. You'll make some money, but the odds of you making as much, uh, I mean, things are flattening and balancing out. And by the way, some people may say, hey, but that's, you know, you're seeing a lot of comics now hit this kind of 10 to 20,000 mark. Yeah, I think that's kind of the, you know, if you're using this system, that's the flattening out that you're going to achieve. What you're not going to see are as many books topping the 50,000 mark. I think you're going to see a definite reduction of that, uh, no matter what happens. So that's that's where I think every market, every system winds up finding its balance. And I think what you'll find is crowdfunding is going to settle into that 10 to 20 range. And then I think it will decrease a little bit from there for a time. It'll kind of just erode. And then there will be a, a new model that will come out that will get everybody's attention. And the, the cycle will continue. Most likely what you'll see. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the matter. You may have completely different thoughts, completely different data. Would love to hear your thoughts in the comment below. I will try and respond, and I certainly look at each and every one. Although I notice sometimes I'll, I'll like something, I'll, I'll heart it, and then uh, I'll come back a couple days later, and the heart is gone. I don't know what... If it's, I always feel like, hey, is this is the product dumb, or is it me? Could be either. You know, in fairness, could be either way. Um, well, anyway, follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. Uh, let me know any topics you'd like me to talk about. And thanks for listening.